In 1859, the British astronomer named Richard Carrington was looking at the sun observing sunspots. While observing it, he suddenly noticed a flash of bright light coming from the sun, which lasted about five minutes. This turned out to be the most intense solar storm in history and was named the Carrington Event. And it was also a first solar flare that we have ever seen and reported. But what really happened due to this? The sun shot a huge amount of its hot plasma at the Earth, which caused mass destruction. The lights were really bright that, if you were in Missouri at that time, you could normally read a book in the night. Gold miners in the Rocky Mountains woke up at 1 a.m. thinking the sun had risen because the aurora was so bright. Telegraph systems across the world were working without being connected to the power at all. They were just running off the insane amount of current caused by the sun. But still, the destruction wasn't huge because at that time, the electricity that we were using was nothing compared to present. And remember, back in 2012, a solar superstorm as big as the Carrington event narrowly missed the Earth by just nine days. Now, Sun releases this kind of solar flares in space in every 11 years. Most of the times, these solar flares are not much destructive, and we get saved by our Earth's electromagnetic field. But sometimes, the Sun releases enormous amount of energy into space. I mean, the Carrington event is very rare. But this time it could happen in 2025. But the question is why Sun do this? In every 11 years, Sun's magnetic fields completely flips, which causes a ton of solar activity. These storms get to their peak, which by the way can turn pretty violent in every 11 years. We mostly get lucky because they bypass us. But we can't expect our good fortune to last forever. Now we have about a 2-3% chance for a Carrington-level event to happen in this decade. So the real question is, what would happen if the Carrington event happened again today? In the modern age, everything relies on electricity. The lights in our homes, the smartphones that we use, and even now, many of our cars are dependent on electricity. It could cause massive power cuts and blackouts, as well as cut off internet access in entire communities, maybe even for months or years. The shorted electrical grid wouldn't be only a one-time loss, it would take us up to 10 years to recover from something like that. That way, humankind might be set back by nearly 20 years. And if it really happens, all those particles wildly bursting around could cause damage to our satellites. We could lose communications that way, no TV internet or GPS. Then there's also a possibility people would face some long-term issues because of that. What could such an amount of solar radiation do to our DNA? Especially those that are not protected by the magnetic field of our planet. Like astronauts. A 2013 study estimated that the electrical outages caused by a Carrington-level event would cost $2.6 trillion for the North American power industry alone. There would be global blackouts lasting years, no lights anywhere in the world for the first time in centuries. Satellites that orbit really high above the Earth are in big danger too. These satellites will be hit with high-energy particles. And this is how the another solar storm as strong as the Carrington event could cause trillions of dollars of damages here on Earth. Well, I guess the ultimate question is what can we actually do to protect ourselves? Using the SOAS spacecraft, we are constantly looking for these ejections of mass to see if they are aimed at us. And when we do see one heading for us, we can calculate when it will arrive based on the speed. This normally gives us around 12 to 48 hours worth of warning. Governments need to sound alarms and order all energy grids to be shut down and disconnected. Everyone will need to disconnect their electronics and wrap their phones and other small electronics in tin foil to prevent them from being fried. Satellites will be put into safety mode to protect them from being damaged. If everything is done quickly, we will be able to reconnect the grid and start everything back up. Your car would probably be okay, but many of the electronic components would be completely fried. Scientists believe that there is a 13% chance we will be hit by a Carrington-level event in the next 10 years, so we have to be prepared.